Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Channel Boolean Node. In previous modules, we, we kind of went over some of our merge nodes and things we use for compositing and putting a different media together. And the one good thing about the merge node, or the one thing about the merge node, is it's kind of alpha based. So any channels, they use their, uh, the alpha to remove, add, or do whatever uh, apply modes we need to do. So for example, if we look at our uh, foreground, if we look down here at our alpha information, you can see we have alpha zero, and then some alpha information when we go over our image, alpha zero. So basically alpha zero is all uh, transparent, and to one is fully not transparent. And then, so your alphas go from zero to one. So these nodes are great for merging together information like this. But what if we've got, say an open EXR file we have to merge together. So let's grab our previous node we've used. Pump this in the background. And we'll select our uh, diffuse color another one Let's say we want to bring in uh, our AO so sorry so basically we're trying to merge these two together but if if you look we've got alpha 1.0 across this entire image and alpha 1.0 across this entire image there's there's no alpha channels to really merge these two pieces of media together and even in a merge if we uh, change say to screen or dissolve there's, there's no way to really bring this in correctly together in order to do that we need to work on the individual color channels to uh Kind of combine and mix them which is a different set of math and logic the good thing is fusion offers that node and that node is a channel balloon node so if we delete our merge node and bring in our information We have the option to kind of move this channel information from one piece of media to another. And, and again, if we look at this, this is all one zero, all one zero. So the channel Boolean node offers a different set of math and logic operations to be able to accomplish this. So we'll go through each one and kind of see what they do. So the copy node basically just copies the information from channel to channel, depending on where you're telling it to copy. So for instance, this is just copying all the foreground information from red to red to green to green to alpha to the alpha. And speaking of alpha, let's take a look at this first before we move on. Because it's a, it could be a problem down the road if you don't fully understand what's going on with this two alpha. So right now we're just copying information. So we've got alpha. If we look down here, alpha 1.0, alpha 1.0 in our media out, which is this window. But if we change our operation to say add, we still have 1.0 coming in. But if we look, we've got alpha 2.0 because we told it to add our alpha foreground to our alpha background. So in order to not have alpha 2.0, which actually isn't a real alpha number, because remember alphas go from zero to one, all you have to do is say, do nothing. So now our alpha is back to one. So anytime you're doing any of these operations, pay attention to your alpha and what's it's doing. Just mouse, mouse over and make sure you're, you're, you're down to your correct alpha levels. Because if you're pushing incorrect alpha data down the chain, it could cause problems. All right, so the copy node. The copy node is just simply copying 
all that channel information down depending on how you tell it to copy. So if we wanted to say copy this red channel information, any reds in here and create a map based off red, we could just simply tell all these to do nothing. And I'm gonna view the alpha channel so you can see what's going on right now. We've just got one everywhere. But if I take this to alpha and I say red background, we just created an alpha based off of that red information. And we could use this as a mat down the channel. So let's reset all this. So that's your copy information. We've also got add if we want to add information. And all that's doing is uh, adding the color values from one channel to the other. We've got subtract, which is subtracting the color values. Our and, which is performing like a logical and for our color values from color channel to color channel. We've got or, which is performing an or logic on the color channels. Exclusive or, which is performing a logic XOR on the color values of the channels. We've got multiply, which is multiplying the values of the color channels. And it's, it, it's kind of darkening the image from a value of zero to one, making white a value of one, uh, middle gray is a value of 0.5, and blacks as a value of zero is what multiply does to your image. We've got divide, which is dividing the value, so it's kind of the exact opposite of multiply. Maximum is comparing the two images to take the maximum or the lightest or the brightest values from each one. Minimums taking the darkest values of each. Your negative is just changing your foreground into a negative. Solid is just creating a solid based off your, your color choices. Clear is doing the opposite, so it's clearing out. Difference is subtracting the greater color values from one color channel from the other. And signed add, it subtracts areas of lower mid grade levels is what it does. So given this scenario right here, since we've got an AO that we want to mix into our, our diffuse color, our best choice would be multiply. Because we just want to multiply those dark values into this image. Now, as far as your channels themselves, your RGB and A channels, you've got tons of choices to uh, do exactly what you want to do. So anything you need to change, you can change right here. If I want to switch my red foreground to my green foreground, I can do that. If I want to switch uh, switch it to a hue, I can switch it to a hue. So it just depends on your <laughs> specific scenario. But the, the options are pretty much unlimited. Well, they're limited, but unlimited to what we really need to do as far as mixing color from one image to another. Now if we need to carry on additional information that isn't present in our standard RGBA, we can use the auxiliary. And if we enable extra channels, we can assign any of these additional channels to do something. So if we need our reds to push through lightness, we can push through lightness. Now you notice that didn't change. That's just pushing that information that can be used in other nodes. So this is pretty much post or pre out just before you're out. It's going to add all this information and push it for other nodes to use. It's not actually going to change your, uh, your actual image. As far as the settings tab goes, it's the same as all other uh, nodes. We have the global, global blend. Um, as well as your channel process and you also have a mask if you're in, inputting masks. Now the channel boolean node also has an effect mask input and it's also got a matte input. So let's let's cover those so you can see the difference. We'll go ahead and create a, uh, a box and input it to 
or mask. So as you can see, we're, we're adding a mask, so it's only affecting what's in that box. And again, if we need to go to settings, we can apply the mask inverted if we need to. If you notice, as I go over this entire image, our alpha is sitting at alpha one zero. So we still have all that alpha, full alpha information that's going within this. Now the difference between the effects and the mat is the mat, if I input this into the mat, it's not going to make any changes. What I need to do is I need to tell the uh, actual channel to do something with a mat. So if I select mat, I can find it, mat. Now you can see it's actually affecting the alpha channel. And if I mouse over, you can see we have zero, one, and zero. So it's actually affecting the mat itself. Same with uh, any color channels. I can affect the actual color channels to do what I needed to do. Whereas if I have it plugged into the effects mask, it's limiting what this is actually affecting within the mask. But you can tell right down here, everything remains at full alpha. So let's go ahead and disconnect this. And to kind of further explain what these channel booleans do, especially when it comes to open EXRs, let's go ahead and add another one. And let's bring down a new layer. We'll input this to our background and a new one to our foreground. And let's go ahead and select our diffuse direct. Now you can see since we're just copying our new diffuse direct information, we're just seeing that image. But if we add it, now we just added that additional diffuse information. So you can see, we'll look in this channel right here. We went from this to this, adding that diffuse data. So this is the concept behind using channel booleans and changing the operations and changing the, the twos for the channels to get the results you need when you're mixing color or pushing color or you need to push any other color information or merge any other co color information. And to kind of show it's, it's not quite the same as a merge node, let's go ahead and delete all these channels. And let's bring back in our original media to our background. Let's change this to copy. see something kind of odd is happening. We're simply copying this information into our channel bullying. But if we mouse over this, we can see we have alpha channels. If we look at our bullying, our alpha channel is solid. Even though we're telling it to do nothing. Even if we switch this, now we're only getting that alpha channel. We're not getting both of them. So the way this operates is different than a merge node. Even if we were to say, add our images together, you can still see we're having weird results when it comes to adding our channel colors. So this node is not made for compositing multiple alpha based images, but if we need to use it for combining color channels to get the result we need. This is the node we want to use. So that's the channel boolean node and I'll see you in the next module.